All right, welcome back to the Parlay Show. Rob Conway here. Time to talk a little UFC, some MMA. UFC 290, a pair of title fights. It looks like it's going to be a pretty decent card from top to bottom. And to help me break it all down, a guy who knows much more about the sport, he is the 2022 uh, PFL lightweight champion, the Canadian gangster. It's Olivier Oben Mercier. How you doing, my man? I'm good, and you? I'm doing very, very well. I'm doing very well. Uh, beautiful weather here in Toronto. I, I assume much the same for you in Montreal. A little warm the last couple of days, but uh, hey, it's better than the freezing cold. Uh, you're going to get back into training soon for the uh, PFL playoffs, August 23rd at MSG, correct? Yeah, already training. So uh, I took a, a week off, and then uh, let's start again. It's... <laughs> It's it's fast. It's really fast. I would have to take uh, maybe uh, another week, but yeah. What can you do? You know, uh, I'm fighting so uh, so soon, so no choice. It's a different beast for sure. It's a different mm -hmm. beast, but you did it well last season, and we're looking forward to seeing you the 23rd at the most famous arena in the world. But let's talk a little bit about UFC 290. You like to uh, make picks here on the show all the time, and we've got a pretty, like I say, decent card from top to bottom and a pair of title fights. Um, this first one is the featherweight title belt. We have the interim champ as well as, of course, the second pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC and Alexander Volkanovsky against Yair Rodriguez. Uh, the odds here are, are obviously in Volkanovsky's favor. Like He dominates this division. He went up to fight Islam Makachev. Uh, didn't work out for him. Uh, wants to go back and do that again. Probably feels like this is just a bump in the road here in his career to try and create a much bigger legacy and being a double champ and etc. But... Uh, out of the gate here, you know, Rodriguez is such an interesting fighter, does so many unique things. Do you think he's going to give a bit of problem here to Volkanovski? I mean, he's pretty good on on the feet. He is really tricky, you know. Yeah. Even Max Holloway had trouble with him with his side step, and he's really, uh, really good at dodging and countering. His kicks are really great. Uh, but the thing with uh, Volkanovski, like, even though he lost his last fight, he looked he looked great. He never looked better. So it, it's it's hard to pick. Uh, uh, it's it's hard to go against Volkanovski in this fight. In, in my mind, uh, we we saw uh, we saw some problem with in the Yaya uh, uh, game in the past where he got taken down and uh, he got uh, beat up on the feet on the on the ground. We saw him have trouble with a good box or we saw him have, have trouble with a good uh, kick uh, counter. So I think Volkanovski is really, really smart. He's such a smart fighter. And I think he's going to be there with a good game plan. So for me, I, I wouldn't, to be honest, I wouldn't bet for Volkanovski since the, the odds are a little bit wild. But um, I, I saw that uh, maybe you can bet on a TKO. I, I could see Volkanovski take him in down and just uh, grind and pound him. Uh, but it's hard at that level. We don't know what the, the game plan is going to be, but uh, that could be a really a possibility. You know? Yeah, plus 200 for Volkanovski uh, to win by uh, KO. Will the fight go the distance is minus 120. Uh, so it's basically a pick on either side. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Volkanovski has the ability to knock people out, but a lot of decisions on his record. Also, you know, I don't know if this matters. You, you know, once you get to the ground, everyone's the same height. But he is five inches smaller than mm -hmm. Rodriguez. Do you think um, that's going to play a role in this fight at all? It, it could play a role, actually, in the, the first couple of rounds. Uh, so it could be a little bit dangerous for Volkanovski in the first couple of rounds. I mean, we, we saw it with Emmett, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did really good to keep the distance. And he kicked him and actually finished him, you know. Uh, uh, so it's it could be the first couple of rounds could be really dangerous, and we know that uh, uh, Yair is really dangerous in the, co the first couple of round. He's still dangerous every round. I mean, we saw it in the Korean Zombie too, but he gets a little bit tired, you know, and um, uh, and get crazy after that. But he is really powerful in the first couple of rounds. So I think uh, Volkanovski know that and he, he's going to be smart. I really do think Volkanovski one of the smartest uh, fighters out there. Uh, we saw him uh, against uh, uh, Makachev. We saw it against uh, uh, a lot of his uh, past fight. Uh, uh, what is his name? Wait, wait. What, what's the name of the, the ex-champ? 
Holloway, Aldo. Holloway, Holloway. I just said his name too, but <laughs> we saw it. We saw it against Holloway too. Holloway is such a tricky fighter, mm -hmm. and he he beat him like nothing the the last fight. And you saw the, the you saw that every fight he got smarter. You know when he fought Holloway. I I really think Volkanovski is a smart fighter and is going to be really really hard to to beat. Plus, you have an infinite cardio. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. We've seen it. Look, Leon Edwards did it to Usman. Uh, Adesanya lost to Pereira. Nunez lost to Pena. I mean, these high top pound for pound fighters have, you know, everyone's susceptible to the one punch. But uh, I just think Volkanovski, like you said, is too smart. He's not going to look past him. I know he wants to go back up and try and be a double champ, but he's just. I think he's a he's a he's a game fighter. He's smart. He's gonna make sure he puts himself in the right spot. You know, if he gets caught with a kick, he gets caught with a kick. Of course, that can happen. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that there's gonna be too much fear there. I, I kind of like the the line for um for will it go the distance? I think this might go five rounds. But you're right. I, I, you have to question a little bit of Rodriguez's um you know gas uh, gas tank just because he doesn't have tons of experience going 25 minutes. But um it'll be an interesting fight. It's not as I don't think it's as far away as the odds are, are showing. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I'm gonna go against you though. I think I'm gonna go uh, inside distance. Inside distance? All right. No, that's good. That's what we like to hear. You know a little bit of discussion. Yeah, right. I think I I I see if Yer is winning, I do see it uh like a, in a KO, you know? Okay. Something like this. And I feel that Volkanovski has still a great chance to finish him too. So I do think inside this sense could be the, the way to go. All right. Should be a good uh, main event. But I, I got to be honest with you. The fight I'm most excited about has got to be the flyweight title fight. Because this is interesting. Minus 209 for Moreno. And it's plus 166 for Pantoja. This is Moreno Pantoja two technically, but really three. This is Pantoja has taken advantage of Moreno twice, once on the Ultimate Fighter, and then once officially in the UFC. And yet he's a big dog here. I I mean that's got to be on both of their minds. You got to be positive for you if you're Pantoja, and you got to have a little concern though if you're Moreno. Yeah, I I think so, but I think it's a uh, it's gonna be a good opportunity, you know, to uh, for Moreno to show that he really really got better, and he did got better. It's yeah. it's crazy, you know, like in uh, the Ultimate Fighter, he was the last pick. In the ultimate fighter, it was the last pick uh, of the team, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And he, he became champion after that. Moreno is really, truly a great example of, uh, of a fighter that got better and just just went for it. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, maybe he was a little bit green when he was uh, in the ultimate fighter. And it took some time for him to to uh, to find his style, and I think really right now he found his style, and he's really really a good fighter, you know. And when his game is uh, is on, he's so good. He is really so good. Um, and Tuzha, I mean, he's he's good too, but the thing is, he didn't really get better, you know. Yeah. It was already good when he fought uh, Moreno, but I don't really see a big uh, a big gap in between him a couple of years ago and now. I see maybe the same guy, or maybe not even as good as the as back then. So it's again, it's hard for me to go against a champion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And if you think about, I mean, look, other than that. Uh, Kai Car France mix in there. Davison Figueredo has basically been fighting Moreno for the last decade. It's, it's mm -hmm. four fights. Um, and Figueredo, I think, if he would be the favorite against Pantoja as well. You know what I mean? So, like, I, this is a step up in class, even though Pantoja has two victories. How do you think this one's going to play out, though, like the, from a betting perspective? Uh, I do think it's going to go to decision. I mean, yeah. um, in that weight class, at that level, uh it's it's gonna be hard to finish it's possible you know i, I could see a scramble uh ending in a in a submission i can can see like a, a big punch but i mean moreno is really good at making points you know touching the guy touching the guy frustrating the guy and uh take over you know he he have a great cardio you have great combo uh but he don't have the biggest power uh, out there. So uh, I do think it's going to go in decision, and I do right. think Moreno is going to win. 
Well, you're going to get a little value there, plus 105 to go to the decision right now. So that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, so we've covered the two big uh, fights. We've got a couple minutes here left. A um, couple of fights I saw on your picks. Uh, I you know, I asked you and, and, and Georges St. Pierre what your picks were, so we'd have them up on the site at bet99.com. And you had Bo Nickel, but I believe you had Robbie Lawler as, as well, right? Okay, yeah, so I do we'll think. Plus 210. Now, Nichols minus 2,500. You didn't just pick him to win. You picked him uh, via uh, a specific method. But those two two picks, why do you got those? Uh, I do think Bo Nickel is, uh, is just going to take the guy down and <laughs> pound him or finish him with the, with the sub uh, in the first round. Yeah. Um, I mean, the guy is fighting. He is 7-0, and oh, but he's not really... Like Bonigal didn't get really tested, but I think his opponent is even worse uh, than that. So uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be hard for the guy to stop the takedown and getting uh, beat up on the ground. And I think that's what uh, Bonigal is gonna do. And I think Bonigal is gonna go for broke. I think yeah. he's gonna try to show that he's really that guy. You know that he's gonna try to finish the the, the his opponent the first round in any manner uh so i do think it's gonna be a little bit uh, all in fight in the first round Perfect. so that's why i do think uh, bonico is gonna win the first round in the first Love it. Round. and then you got robbie lawler at plus 210 all right so looking forward to it uh olivier it should be an absolutely fantastic card uh thanks so much uh, for joining me here on the parlay show that's the canadian gangster he's a 2022 pfl champion good luck with the rest of your training and we will talk to you before august 23rd when you are at msg yeah, for sure. And by the way, really nice name, the party show. Like, <laughs> well, thank you. Damn, there's like three, uh, <laughs> three things to do. <laughs> wow, it's, uh, right. I was yeah. impressed. French, we got the Canadian, and of course the parlay in bed. Yeah, <laughs> we have the party, the French, the Canadian. It's really good show, really good uh, name. I'm like impressed. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. See you. Coming up next, we will talk with Sean McCormick as he joins myself and Albert. We'll be back to talk the Toronto Blue Jays here on the Parlay Show. 